Our next episode starts with Satsuki talking to one of the other classmates who's not part of the main group. Her name is Mio Imai, and she apparently likes to make keychains and gives one to Satsuki. The next day, the class is selecting a new animal caretaker. Imai has apparently been it for the past five years, so Hajime nominates Satsuki to be the new one. The teacher decides that a two-person team would be ideal, so they're both selected. When Satsuki shows up at school with Hajime, they see Amai off at the animal cemetery. More or less, dead animal is buried, comes back to life, and then turns into a monster. All the rabbits except the revived one, Shirotabi, are dead the next morning, and Mio notices blood on its mouth. When Hajime and Satsuki inspect the cemetery again, they find a small doll in the open grave. They check the diary and read about a ritual that will revive the dead in a berserker state. To seal it away, they need the cooperation of the one who revived the corpse, aka Mio. The kids stake out at school and find her checking on the cages. The were-rabbit goes wild again and they flee to the science lab. Relatable, but that's no reason to take up necromancy. So to stop everyone from getting torn to shreds, Mio recites the spell, flings the rabbit doll at the demon, and all is back to normal. The workers tell us that it was sealed up due to an accident a long time ago where a lot of people died inside the tunnel, so it's haunted. This has to be the single most ghost-heavy town in anime history. Hajime knows about the story of the accident and tells the rest of the group. They then get picked up by a taxi and it takes them right into the ghost tunnel. Well, that got dark real quick. The group wakes up, and they are separated from each other. Satsuki is with Keichiro, and for some reason, Amano Jaku is there too. She checks the diary, but there's no way recorded to defeat this ghost. All they know is that it's powered by regret and loneliness. Hajime meets up with Leo, while Momoko is left alone at the cemetery. The longer the kids stay there, the more life force is sucked out of them, as they're forced to watch the taxi driver's memories. <laughs> And I noticed your voice didn't change that time. She tells the kids that if they want to escape, then they have to destroy their own tombstones. I know this narration feels a bit sloppily put together here, but believe me, this is how the episode actually flows. All the kids are separated, then suddenly they're all back together, surrounded by monuments to themselves. They make it back to the other side, but they're not out of danger yet. The ghost driver gives them a lift out of the tunnel, apologizing for putting them through that. On the way down the mountain, they pass his daughter, now grown up. She's heading for the tunnel to leave him flowers and his favorite fruit. That wouldn't have been out yet, this came out in the early 2000s. Yeah, that's more like it. Yep, this is the killer doll episode. Keichiro finds the doll sitting on top of a trash can, but Sasuke tells him to leave it there. Later that night, she finds it sitting on a cabinet. She cleans the smudge off of its face and then chews Keichiro out for disobeying her. She tells him to put that thing back where it came from, or so help me. Later, Satsuki is awakened by the phone ringing. Hi, Mia no ista des. Okay, okay, no more rickrolling this review. <laughs> Satsuki's dad comes in, and seeing his daughter freaking out over a toy, he takes it away and puts it back in the trash again. But the next day, they learn that their dad was injured in an accident, and that Mary is stalking her. Their dad's going to be fine, but he won't be able to come home that night. So, we're about to get a reenactment of small soldiers. The doll chases Hajime, Satsuki, and Keichiro, and just when the ghosts are about to kill Satsuki, her handkerchief falls out of her pocket. Mary sees it, remembers how Satsuki cleaned her that one time, has a change of heart, and lets her go. The next episode starts with Keiichiro in the nurse's office with a stomach ache. He sees a spooky lady with purple lips and a nurse outfit. Leo says that it's probably the cursed nurse from an old rumor, but Satsuki seems adamant that there is no such thing. That night, Keiichiro has a dream that his mom is getting taken away by the ghostly nurse. Later at school, he sees the ghost again, but Satsuki still doesn't believe him and accuses him of lying. Yeah, she's very dumb. Later that day, Keiichiro goes to the hospital by himself, and Satsuki looks up the ghost in the diary. 
it was sealed away in the infirmary, and the way that Satsuki's mom sealed it was by telling the ghost twice that the patient's illness has been cured. Satsuki goes after Keichiro and reveals to Momoko that she hates nurses in hospitals because her mother died in a hospital and she doesn't want to be reminded of them. They arrive in time to find Keichiro cornered by the nurse. Satsuki chants the spell, but it doesn't work. It turns out that the nurse was just there to deliver a message, and it drops a letter addressed to Satsuki and her family. They read it together and have a nice tender group hug. That episode's done, on to the next one. I know it seems like we just kind of breezed past a lot of these, but that's really all that the plot has of substance in these last few episodes. The next episode is about a ghost artist. If it paints your portrait, you get trapped in the painting. When we join the gang, they're admiring a painting that Satsuki submitted to an art contest. She got first prize for her drawing of the old schoolhouse. When everyone leaves, blood starts dripping from one of the windows, and when they see it the next day, it turns out that the same thing happened to the real schoolhouse. It turns out that it's just red paint mixed with rain that came in from a hole in the ceiling. Satsuki has invented live streaming through paint. Jaku Jaku shows up to tell them that this is the work of the Da Vinci Ghost, an art teacher who admired the real Da Vinci and committed suicide in the old schoolhouse. According to the diary, Kayako sealed Da Vinci inside a painting of the old schoolhouse and says that if someone were to paint the exact same thing, then Da Vinci would be released? They can see that Da Vinci has started to paint Momoko and they get some incense from the other schoolhouse ghosts. But because the page in the diary is smudged, they can't see the entire sealing ritual, but it's a start. They go after him and he takes Momoko and it retreats inside the painting. Satsuki and Hajime follow them, and they realize that the school looks very pristine. A boy gives Satsuki a gift, mistaking her for someone else. Inside the school, they hear a radio playing, announcing a baseball game from 1973. They happen upon Satsuki's mother, Kayako, and they recruit her to help them stop Da Vinci. They corner him, and he tries to escape through Kayako's painting, but because Satsuki's painting was inside the school's incinerator at the time, Da Vinci catches on fire. They perform the spell and put him back to slumber. Before they return to their own time, Satsuki gives the present back to the kid, who happens to be her father from the past. She needed to make sure that he gave it to her mother so she doesn't Marty McFly herself. After that, the diary entry updates itself to include Satsuki in the story. But if you figure out how to do that, let me know. The next episode has the gang investigating a rumor about a ghost near railroad tracks. Leo gives them cameras that can apparently see ghosts, and he takes a picture of Momoko. When it develops, he sees a hand on her shoulder. That's a stretch, but we've ripped off everything else, so why not? There's not really a lot to cover in this episode. The ghost is the spirit of a girl who was hit by a car and died near the railroad tracks. She haunts Momoko and causes her to fall ill. She's not at rest because she dropped her engagement ring inside the taxi that hit her, and once the game returns into her monument at the crossing, she takes the driver who hit her to the afterlife with her, and she's finally at peace. That is a good question. You'd think that she was a medium or something, but I don't think they ever actually gave a legit reason. If they did, I missed it. Next episode is about the school's alcohol club. To boost her luck, Satsuki tries to join the club and practice spells with them, even though she should know by now that that's bad juju. The gang leader, Shinobu, is actually using the club members to gain power by sacrificing them. As each one disappears, everyone else forgets about them. It turns out that Shinobu was actually a ghost named Yamine. After a short chase, Satsuki consults the diary, and using the light from a camera flash, she vanquishes the darkness. Next episode is about a haunted apartment building. Apparently, the cursed structure is causing Satsuki's dad to be sick, so they go to investigate. And it looks like Dr. Wiley lives here. In order to break the curse, the man who built the apartments plans to sacrifice himself to the ghosts to make amends for splitting the Earth's veins or something like that. The ghost is called Soma. They do the ritual to seal it, the guy sacrifices himself, the gang escapes, and the building gets demolished. Not a lot scary here unless you're afraid of mannequins. Episode 17 is about a haunted ski resort. The crew meets a girl named Yuki, and she tells them that the lake nearby is called Bloodstained Lake. Later, the lake turns red, and she says that it's an omen that her older sister, Miyuki, who drowned years ago, is trying to come back and take someone back with her to the afterlife. They find a picture of who they think was the ghost, and when someone who looks just like her shows up, they try to cast the spell to put her back to sleep. 
But Hajime found a newspaper article revealing that Yuki is actually the ghost, and they send her to eternal rest instead. <laughs> Episode 18, The Curse of the Haunted Broadcasting Room. People who use the radio suddenly fall ill. It's actually Akane, a girl who died in the broadcast room of the old schoolhouse. So now she's cursing the entire school. Basically, it's the radio equivalent of the ring. If you hear the ghost's voice, you die. And they even have her crawl out of the TV, just like the ring. Akane's curse will take effect at sunset, and when there's less than a minute left, she starts counting down, but skips every number that has a 4 in it. Again, using the unlucky number as a MacGuffin. Episode 19, featuring the headless biker we saw in the first episode. Everywhere he goes, disaster strikes, causing people to almost lose their heads. Apparently, if you wear a scarf, the headless biker can't attack you because he can't see your neck. I take back what I said earlier about the lamest technicality being the clock tower. They actually fail to seal the ghost away, so nothing actually gets resolved, just like with Babasari. Alrighty, last episode, here we go. It's almost the second anniversary of Satsuki's mother's passing, as well as the one year anniversary of Kaya, the cat, showing up. Before Jaku Jaku possessed him, of course. When the gang gets to school, they see a strange fog guiding all the students and faculty to the old schoolhouse. The entire school body is hypnotized, and they start attacking Satsuki and Keichiro, and then Babasari shows up again. And so does the ghost hand from the toilet. Amano Jaku warns the team that this is the spirit of vengeance named Oma, and then he's after Satsuki and Keichiro. The rest of the gang makes it inside, meets up with the siblings, and narrowly dodge a big cluster of ghosts. Jaku Jaku shows up and holds him off long enough for the kids to gather the materials the ghost diary said that they would need to seal him away. But, being stuck in a cat's body, he's no match for Oma. The Spirit of Vengeance finds the kids in the school bell tower, and after blowing a hole in the front of the school, they see that the outside has been turned into a hellscape. After some encouragement from Kayako's ghost, the gang executes the ritual and Oma is sealed away again, along with all the other ghosts, including Jaku Jaku, and the ground closes back up with some bad CGI effects. Keijiro checks on the cat, Kaya, and it turns out that it's just back to being a normal cat. After the incident, it seems that the ghost diary is now blank. The last thing we see is Keijiro and Satsuki standing under a tree, and they hear Jaku Jaku's laugh. <laughs> so, yeah, the show is just kind of mediocre on the whole. I can see why not a lot of people talk about the Japanese version. I will admit that there were times when the visuals were kind of creepy, and a lot of the setups were cool, but I feel like that there just wasn't enough character progression, and a lot of the resolutions ended up being too simple. All of the main cast was super bland. They weren't even really stereotypes outside of Leo being the nerd and Hajime being the pervert. They were so boring as characters that they hardly even have one dimension, more like half a dimension. In addition to that, most of these kids are in fifth grade, and there are a lot of panty shots in this anime. I'm already getting fake Collide Liner flashbacks, and I don't like that. Your voice is a little bit different. Is the show still messing with you? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I'll make you some tea after we're done here. But to wrap things up, yeah, the Japanese version of the show is pretty boring. And now, on to what I know most of you are here for, the English dub. According to the research I've done on this show, Gakko no Kaiden, which translates into school ghost stories, was a financial failure in Japan. So when ADV got the licensing rights to release an English dub, they were told to do whatever it takes to make the show sell, but keep all the characters' names the same, as well as the same basic plot. The result is what I believe inspired every bridge series ever. Things like Yu-Gi-Oh! Abridged, DBZ Abridged, Friendship is Witchcraft, all of them seem to be able to trace their roots back to ghost stories. While I'm sure that not all of them used it as a template, most of Bridge series are inspired by each other, and one of them somewhere must have used ghost stories as a reference. So what does this mean? Well, for character changes, Momoko is now a devout Christian. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal savior? And for some reason, they make Leo Jewish. I'm Jewish. I'm Jewish. Praise Jehovah. And they made Satsuki's mom a lesbian with the voice of a man doing a bad woman impression. Even after I married your father, I still dress like a dyke. Yeah, I don't get it either. And lastly, Keishiro is apparently mentally handicapped and oftentimes just stutters gibberish. Keishiro, what are you retarded? <laughs> Obviously. Which way did he go? <laughs> and funnily enough, because of when it was dubbed, we also got some pretty big names in the anime voice acting community at the time. 
such as Hilary Hagg, known for her role as Foucault in Clannad and Tessa from Full Metal Panic, Monica Real, known for Amy from Case Closed, Bulma from Dragon Ball, and Kyoko from Full Metal Panic, Chris Patton, who was Greed in Full Metal Alchemist, and Sosuke Sagara in Full Metal Panic, and Greg Ayers, who was Monokuma in Danganronpa, and Shinji from Full Metal Panic. A lot of Full Metal Panic in this cast. Also, a lot of Case Closed extras, and I thought a lot of the modern dubs were reusing too many voices. And for the majority of the humor, it's off the wall randomness, a lot of pop culture references, fourth wall breaks, excessive profanity, sex jokes, and they really like to bring up Christian Slater. Here's a short compilation of some of the more well known jokes from the English dub. Think of a big black man chasing you! <laughs> well, he's not racist. Time to go home, load up that bong, and watch Pokemon! And then when his mother came home, she found him. As dead as Christian Slater's career. Well, if you're gonna stay. The script so far isn't making any sense to anyone working on this show, so here's what we got. An extra large black penis, maybe. You filthy furry spawn of Satan, goddamn you to hell! If it wasn't for us meddling kids and our trusty retarded sidekick, Ketchero, I've been waiting five volumes for that joke. Honestly, I think it was funny the first time, maybe the second time, but after that it just got kind of boring and stale. After episode 14, the writing really started to go downhill. You could tell that they were just done caring after that point. The jokes got lazier, and most of them boiled down to every character being horny, despite most of them being, you know, not even done with puberty yet. The biggest disadvantage this show has against the other Bridge series is that it wasn't allowed to edit the footage. This made it come across as more of a 20 episode riff track than a legitimate English dub. I know they didn't really care when they made this, and that made it legendary, but it's just not my cup of tea. Funnily enough, there actually was a second English dub produced by Animax, but, like their dub of Double Zeta Gundam, it seems lost to the void with no one knowing where the entire thing is. So, for those of you who want to watch the entire thing, be my guest. Maybe you'll get a little more enjoyment out of it than I did. And that brings our Halloween 2020 special to a close. Sorry it had to be a two-parter and actually finish in November, but life's just been very hectic as of late. 2020's been a heck of a year for everybody, but it's almost over. We just gotta stay strong and keep moving forward. Well, thank you all so much for watching, hope you had a nice, safe, and happy Halloween, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out.